Hi, I'm Kristen. So today I've got my quilting gloves on. We're going to practice some free motion quilting. Um, a few of you have asked me uh, in the comments when I've had videos where I've done some free motion quilting, um, if I could do videos kind of showing how to do it. Now, um, I'm not an expert of free motion quilting. I think most of you know I'm pretty much a beginner quilter. I call myself a confident beginner. Um, and that's the same with free motion quilting. So what I'm going to show you today is not a particular free motion quilting design or anything like that. It's basically an exercise um, in how to go about maybe practicing, how to build up your confidence, how to feel good just like having a go at it and trying it. And I'll show you the basics of how you get the machine set up and all of that. Um, but that's basically what this is about. This is about Here's something we can just try uh, together and you'll see that mine does not turn out perfect. So hopefully that will take the pressure off of you too. And um, then you'll feel more confident kind of having a go at really simple, the, some of the other simple designs that I've maybe shown in some of these other videos. Cause if the person who makes this sample piece <laughs> can do those simple designs and so can you um, is basically what I'm saying. So um, let's get started. Let's start with any kind of quilt um, panel or uh, fabric with a great big pattern and lots of shapes in it. This one is called Stitch Cats by Nancy Nicholson for cloth works, but you can use anything. And all I've done is sandwiched it up with some batting and a backing. It's actually a little pillowcase <laughs> and, um, and that's all you need. So these are what I'm going to use. So I've got some thread. It's just cheap Coatsman thread. This isn't Aurifil or anything fancy, but I've got the same color in the bobbin. You use whatever thread you're comfortable with. Um, I need some sort of free motion quilting foot. This is a ruler foot. It's just what I like using, but you can use an open toe foot or any kind of free motion foot. And then if your machine has different kinds of stitch plates, then you need to make sure you're using the stitch plate that's a, for a straight stitch. So just make sure you've taken out the one with the wider gap. Um, that I have there as well. So, and quilting gloves, I'm wearing my quilting gloves. Mine are really dirty, <laughs> but anyway, they've got these, you don't need, need these, but I find them helpful for, um, you know, just moving things around. You have more bigger quilts, but I guess I'm in the habit of, of using them. So I'm gonna use them for this as well. And they've just got these little plastic um, or silicone or something, bobbles on the fingers that help you to like grip the fabric so that you're not pinching it and stuff. So I'll put a link to some, but you can buy these everywhere and you can there's all sorts of brands and obviously these have seen better days <laughs> okay um next step so the first thing we have to do once we've got our um foot on and again ruler foot i know that's the one i'm using but that's not necessarily the best one to use and these are expensive so you don't need to buy this if your machine comes with an open toe foot that's probably better because you can probably see where you're going a bit better i'm just used to this so i put it on but the first, first thing you need to do is to see these, these are your feed dogs here, these teeth. So when you're using a straight stitch, um, this is what helps to pull the fabric along. You know how if you're sewing um, and you don't necessarily pull them or push, the, the, the fabric just moves, right? So that's what makes that happen. But we're going to put those down. So I have a button on the side of my machine that lowers the feed dogs there. Hopefully you saw that. Um, yours could be in another place, so check your manual. My old Janome, it used to be like around the, the back, um, back there. Um, so there's various places that could be, but that's the first thing you need to do. So that so the free motion means we're free of the, of the feed dogs and we're causing the motion by pushing the fabric around. So that is the most important bit. Um, don't worry about stitch length or any of that. Um, I'm sure uh, I've seen things where you should drop it to zero. I think you have to check your machine, okay? So uh, I, I used to drop it to zero and it doesn't seem to make much difference whether I do that or not on a Bernina, that's the machine. So I don't know if that's just my machine or what, but so check what your sewing machine says about that. So, um, and if it's not working, you know, with a stitch length of zero or it's not working with a stitch length of two, then try the other, you know, try try zero or try two, right? Uh, I think I had it on mine on 250 the whole time, but it didn't, I, d I don't think um, that makes a whole world of difference, at least on my machine. Okay. So now we're ready to start. So just bring your sample underneath the foot. Um, and what we're gonna do first is pull up the bobbin thread from underneath. So 
I'm just going to drop the needle, hold on to the top thread gently, and then lift the needle again, and then pull, tug. I had to do a little tugging. It got a bit caught. And I'm just trying to, to um, sorry, you can't see it there, but free up the, uh, the bobbin thread, make sure it's come up above the top. And so then I'm using some tweezers just to pull it all the way out. And that's that. So now you won't have um, the thread kind of hanging off the back in the back. So then we're going to put the needle down, take a few stitches, just travel away from it. And then uh, we're going to trim those ends off so they don't get in our way, basically. Right. So um, now, so what we're basically going to do here is probably something that looks a little bit more like thread painting than free motion quilting. We're not doing a repetitive design all over. What we're doing is kind of tracing this big pattern or print that's in the panel in my case, whatever it is you're using. So I've got my hands flat on, e on the fabric on either side of the foot, kind of as close as it can get. And then what we're trying to do is just an outline and trace. There's a few things you want to be thinking about. Sort of how am I going to get from A to B? So I'm going to do some unusual traveling later on in this sample, but usually you're trying to not go over yourself too often. You're trying not to cross lines. So things like that. If you get, you know, it's a practice piece at the whole point. So if you get stuck, don't worry about that. But you're basically looking for where could I go next? So I'm going, for example, around the cat's head here and then when I get to the other side I'll have a few choices of where I could choose to quilt next so um, I'm gonna go down and do the kind of side triangles here and you can rotate so you saw me rotate that there you can just move it around whichever way is more comfortable for you you can be quilting away from yourself towards yourself um, I'm sure there are people with theories on what is easier, but it's going to be whatever feels right for you. Um, and so there I'm going to go over a line basically that I've already gone over on the chin there in order to get me to these next triangles. So I might think to myself, hmm, was that the best thing? Maybe next time I would do the triangles first and then outline the whole cat's head to get back. You know, there's kind of, it's just having a think about what would I do? How would I get myself out of a corner or whatever. So then I'm trying these different shapes up the top and you can try, things to try would be taking it really slow and then speeding it up a little bit faster than maybe would feel comfortable to you and see whether you get a more messy or a smoother uh, line or, or pattern, you know, tracing effect, uh, depending on the speed you go. So you could be trying those kind of things. So the bit about it, even though it is a little bit more like like painting a picture with thread than it is free motion quilting. But the thing that's gonna um, help when you do go to do sort of repetitive uh, patterns where you're echoing or whatever, which is when you go over uh, a number of times, you often ha um, find yourself sort of stuck in a corner. So this is kind of gonna be a helpful exercise for kind of going, what's the next line I should follow? Where am I going after this one? So you don't necessarily have to plan the whole thing out in advance because I'm not, I'm not that kind of person, but you do kind of have to go, well, what am I going to do the next step after this one kind of thing? How am I going to leave? You know, so here I'm having to think, what am I going to do for the eye? Do I want to, how can I travel the least? Where will it look the least strange? Obviously if I was doing a quilt and I wanted to go into the middle, I might cut my threads and start again on the quarter of the eye but I don't want to do that for this practice thing so I went for the edge of the eye like a little eyeliner or something and then I'm doing a little maybe pebble type thing around the pupil and then I'm like okay now how am I going to get out of that so I go back to the corner and I'm going to connect it up to the nose and I think that's kind of cat looking maybe and then how do I get to the other eye so I'm going to go across and then connect again and then just do the same thing again and I'm going around couple of times so I can get the eye um, outlined and then get back to uh, be able to connect again with the pupil and go around again. So I'm just thinking, what's the next thing? Okay, so now I'm going to, when I'm done that, I'm going to travel again to the corner of the eye and then back up to the edge. And then I'm going to have another choice. Where do I go next? So uh, in this case, I'm going to kind of do the outside of the cheek again. And then I have a way to get back 
down to do the whiskers and uh, things like that around the cat's mouth. So, and sometimes, um, especially when you're doing this kind of exercise, you got to travel over yourself a few times. But it's, I guess it's an exercise in traveling over yourself the least, or um, in a way that looks the least strange. And that'll just, when you go and actually practice a proper free motion quilting design, um, you'll kind of understand why this was, was part of the practice for that. So, um, and you can use, you know, elements in the panel to practice things maybe you already know. So this is like a really teeny tiny version of like pebbles that I'm kind of doing around the, I don't know what are those freckles or wherever the whiskers come out of the cat. I don't know what those dots are. Um, but this is on like, I didn't measure what this panel is, but let's say it's a 12 inch block or something like that. Um, this is such a small scale. It would be very unlikely you'd be doing free motion quilting this detailed on something this size. So this is going to be lots of small movements. It's lots of kind of practicing and, um, you know, just getting the control. So when you go and do something on a bigger scale, a like all over design or something like that, I promise you it's going to feel easier than this. So um, just keep that in mind that this is kind of an exercise. Uh, okay, so I'm going to speed up um, some of the rest of what I'm doing, but I'm basically coming up with new ideas for how I can outline something, how I can get from A to B, practicing different ways of moving and different speeds. And that is the purpose of this practice piece. Okay, so this is now sped up to 15 times normal speed, okay? So I am not quilting it this quickly. If you've ever seen long arm videos on TikTok or things like that, they're usually speeding it up too, okay? So um, you can take your time, you can go as slowly as you like. I'm just kind of giving you a visual basically for what I'm talking about. So that this isn't a video about teaching you how to quilt a cat, otherwise I would slow it down and show you what I'm doing. Um, what I'm really doing is just following the lines, experimenting, where could I join my lines back up again? How could I get from one place to the other? Um, and readjusting my hands when they go, you know, when I don't have them lying flat like they should be. So you should just be sort of pushing around gently. You shouldn't have to be pinching fabric or anything like that. But sometimes, you know, my hands go a bit off and, and that's what happens there. Um, and if you come across like the same shapes or the same things, patterns in your fabric in different places, you could try making different decisions with them each time. So, um, for example, down on the cat's bum, I guess, I circled um, some little asterisks and here I'm actually going over the asterisks. And when I got to the end of the bird, um, I kind of decided I was going to do some just loop-de-loops all around just to get a bigger motion going after all that tiny quilting. So that's it finished. Um, you can see, you could probably see during the quilting and you can see now looking at it, it's, there's, it is no way a perfect example of quilting or free motion quilting or anything like that. Um, but I feel like I got to practice some shapes. I feel like, um, maybe there's a few elements that I could take to a quilt, um, and use and some that I would be like, no, nah, I'm not going to use that shape or I need to practice that some more. Um, so for me, it's a useful exercise and even though it doesn't look perfect, it still builds my confidence. So please, when you do it, um, take that attitude towards it. Don't just see the mistakes, kind of, uh, see the bits that did go well and take a learning experience of, you know, what you might do differently, slow down, speed up the next time you go to do it. So now I'm going to show you, um, a slightly, uh, bigger example. So it's another way to practice your free motion quilting, not on like a 12 inch block, on like a bigger scale. So this is a quilt I did some time ago. So this is that quilt. I will show you a picture of it laying out, but this is it. I wanna show you some things closer up. So basically this is, uh, I made it in strips. There's a whole blog post about this quilt, but not a video, because I wasn't doing videos when I made it. But anyway, so for example, if I just push this down. So this was like where the, I just decided on a line. I think I did it up to where this actual seam line was in the strip. So for example, here I've tried some leaves in a particular way. And then over here, I've tried, tried some flowers and just practiced all sorts of different, some more successful than others. So this one is like a little vine thing. It doesn't look great. Um, 
but in the grand scheme of things with everything else you hardly notice it um i was trying different kind of shattered straight line quilting so i found some things that i liked there um this one was like um almost like a crocodile skin it's kind of like pebbles but it's in squares um just tried some wavy lines this was all free motion um another one was loops and i tried this this kind of um echoing back. i don't know what that's called i'm sure that's got a name echoing back and forth thing and some loose pebbles on this green and then this kind of like meander thing up here so the point is that you can just kind of make a quilt or a piece and don't try anything in huge sections don't you don't have to commit to an all over design you can kind of just try things in different places if that feels better to you than um doing a practice piece um like that copa i actually find strangely even though it's counterintuitive that it's somewhat easier on a bigger piece to move the way you want like on a small test block the scale is always small and the way you move around is always small so um it just makes it a bit harder uh, and this was just, it's hard to see, it's kind of, and then on the outside, I just, I did straight lines um, for the borders, because that was when I was learning like every kind of quilting. So I'm like, I'll do matchstick quilting on the edges. Look, I even, so I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't even bury the threads on this end. So you can see I've like, they've been knotted and trimmed all along the edge here, which is not, I'm sure, I should have like traveled probably. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so it's two different ways that you can practice whatever one feels more comfortable for you. So I hope that was helpful. You've kind of seen my free motion quilting warts and all and how it is not perfect. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to free motion quilt a whole quilt, right? I'm going to go, okay, what is a shape that I do feel comfortable doing? I've practiced. I don't like my flowers. Maybe I won't do flowers. But I have done leaves, for example, on the nine patch quilt that I did a few weeks ago. And I really liked how it turned out, even though it's not perfect. So you just have to find something that you do feel comfortable with and have a go and try it. So that's my advice to you because it's lots of fun. And actually, you can get through quilting quilts a lot faster sometimes when you're using free motion quilting. So that's a that's a bonus. Um, if you like videos like this, then please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, and thanks so much for spending time with me.